Okay, welcome back to day three for us, day two of the conference. We are here live at the Strata Conference, which is the, the, the most authoritative big data conference around the future of the world, society, uh, technology, and uh, O'Reilly Media is putting on a hell of a good event here, and uh, we're here covering it, siliconangle.com. This is theCUBE, our flagship telecast, where we go out to the top tech events and we talk to the smartest people we can find, CEOs, entrepreneurs, tech geeks, VCs, whoever, whoever has the signal from the noise, we want to extract that out, share that with you. This is theCUBE, siliconangle.tv's flagship telecast, and uh, we're here, I'm excited. I'm John Furrier, the founder of siliconangle.com, and I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of wikibon.org, and John, this is uh, day three for us. It's, uh, it's always a good event. Last year was uh, one of our largest events, uh, Strata, big data, um, a lot of infrastructure, a lot of application stuff, a lot of really interesting use cases coming out, and uh, so John, let's talk uh, investments. So we're yes. here with Mike Dauber, who's a venture uh, partner at uh, Battery Ventures, which is a very well-known venture capital firm. His focus is big data. He's been in the trenches. He's been making some big investments, personal investments uh, in Weeby Data, which they changed their name. I guess now it's officially Weeby Data. You invested in continuity with Todd Papiano, who's been on theCUBE multiple times. Yeah. Um, great guy at Yahoo, pioneer in Hadoop. His co-founder, uh, Jonathan Gray, essentially the guy with HBase, one of the core contributors of HBase. Uh, Mike, you're in the trenches. We met uh, online, we chatted at big data conferences before, um, you're on the street, you're making investments, you're doing personal investments, you get the landscape covered up and down like, like we are, we're covering like a blanket with the media, uh, you're covering it from a VC standpoint, right. so welcome to theCUBE, your Thank first you. time on. No, it's exciting, um, I, I've, I've, I've wanted to be on here many times, so <laughs> I, I finally made it. Um, so my question to you is, uh, you're doing some real good work. What are you seeing out there right now? The VC landscape is obviously hot on big data. Uh, you're not a newcomer. You're not a, you know, a bandwagon investor. You've been there from the beginning with Ping Lee and Frank Artali and a, and a slew of other ones we've invested in. Uh, we've talked with investors. Um, what's going on? I mean, Big Data Fund by Excel was really kind of the groundbreaking yeah. PR kind of event within the mainstream media. New York Times has big data yeah. on, uh, on the I front mean, page. And what's happening? Well, you know, it's, it's funny, right? Three years ago, anytime you got a pitch, people try to figure out how to, a way to put the, the word green into the pitch, right? Even yeah. it, had, it had nothing to do with anything that was remotely clean. Everyone wanted to figure out a way to make it green, or they try to figure out a way to put it in cloud. Um, the number of business plans that we just see that just randomly get submitted that have nothing to do with big data but find a way to put those words in there, um, it's amazing to me. Is that big data washing? We should could we coin the term? Cloud yeah. washing was a hot thing during yeah, it's, 2010? It's, yeah, it's big data washing. But I, I will tell you, what, you know, certainly what, what, what we think is going on, what we're excited about it is, look, at the infrastructure layer, the Cloudera's, the Hortonworks's, the, the MapR's of the world, you know, these guys have already gotten a lot of money. I think the infrastructure layer is, is, is going to be built out. Um, I think in Q4 last year, MapR, Horton, and Cloudera alone raised $90 million, right? So a ton of money is going to that infrastructure layer. But if you just move just one click up the stack, there isn't a lot going on. I mean like, so everyone can name those explain, guys. Explain that for the folks out there. One step above the stack, what does so, that mean? So you've got, you've, got your, you've got your infrastructure layer, the guys who do commercial uh, support for Hadoop or commercial support for Cassandra, but if, if I'm an end user and I want to I wanna do something in an application, right? I, there aren't, you know, all right, so I got my Hadoop up and running. Now what, right? I want to you know, you know, ETL my data and I want to go do something with it. You know, really the only company out there that, has, that we were seeing last year that really had any level of traction was Datamir. And I think Datamir is a great company. I think Stefan's done a great job with mm -hmm. the company. But we weren't seeing a lot of activity around that. And um, that was what led me to get to meet Christoph at the time called Odiago. You know, here was someone who was really focused on on-prem anal analytics and some of the things that they've done, I think, that he's been public about with uh, Atlassian in terms of targeting, targeting marketing and sales activities. Uh, Wikipedia and some of the work they've done with Wikipedia and figuring out, you know, making sure that, you know, John, you're not going out and editing lots of New York Yankee sites because we know what you do if you're editing Yankee sites. I'm a Red Sox fan. Yeah, you're a Red Sox <laughs> fan. Um, Rewriting history. And, 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 and Todd, you know, Todd, Todd and John's background, but Todd being from the enterprise space, but also running that, you know, a big chunk of cloud infra at, at, at Yahoo, we thought, look, there's got to be an opportunity for people to start to build things up the stack and not just focus on, 
you know, this, this base layer. Okay, so let me ask you a question. So Dave sure. and I have, you know, obviously we, we wrote this earlier, but it's pretty clear from this conference that 2010 was what is Hadoop, 2011 was yeah. big data is a viable business opportunity, 2012 is really about platform maturity, That's right. and the on, new applications are emerging, as you mentioned, it's pretty uh, greenfield right now, embryonic, if yeah. you want to call it that, and 2013 is going to be the year of money, right? <laughs> uh, people are going to make sure money, so. people are going to make money, value from businesses, top line revenue, business models will be changing at, at the, in the marketplace, not just for the startup companies, but you know, services companies and product companies. So one, do you agree with that? Absolutely. And two, what is the application areas that you see that you wish the entrepreneurs were working more on? So yeah. Mike, just to clarify, a follow up on one, yeah. we, you know, we, were, we were saying this is the year of application innovation. Do you think we're too early? Do you think it's actually going to be this year or is it going to seep into I next mean, year? You're, you're seeing it already this year, I yeah. think. I mean, you saw, uh, I saw him stand over here before. Avi made it, right? Gave a great keynote yesterday at Strata. He was on the yeah. cube, yep. I, uh, Avi's a great guy. If you, if you look at what Avi's doing with Trasada, and their product around, around mortgages, right? And how they give mortgage intelligence to the banks, right? They don't go to the banks and tell them, hey, we have some big data solution for you. And the banks don't care, right? What the banks right. do care about is improving their mortgage portfolios, right? That's a big pain point for them. And if Avi can leverage big data infrastructure to solve that problem, I think that's a great application space. I think you're seeing things in the healthcare space. Anywhere where you have large amounts of data that, that, are, that doesn't already exist in a highly structured way, right? Like if I'm Visa, Right, you know, I, you know, credit card data is already highly structured. Now, I think Visa has applications around unstructured data as well, but you know, credit card transactions, you know, you know, email headers, things like that. It's highly structured data. People have lots of good solutions for that. So we're not trying to go out and reinvent the wheel. What what we see happening though is, is you know, for 30 years we had this relational data model, and everyone built applications on top of these relational data stores. Now all of a sudden they have to deal with relational data and non-relational data. Right, and to us that's really the core of the movement of big data. So anybody who can take an application and play off of this sort of heterogeneity in the market I think has a great opportunity to make a lot of money. So you mentioned uh, Trisada, that now that's really l largely a vertical application that's for right. financial services. Are you looking to invest in more vertical applications, horizontal applications, both? How do you see I, that I, shaking both. out? I, you know, so, so for me continuity and, uh, and Weeby data are more on the horizontal application space, mm -hmm. but I, you know, I know of a deal coming down the pipe right now in the hospitality space and saying, look, look at all the data that sits around in hospitality, right? You know, how do you go out and price, you know, think about like what Hotwire does and what Priceline does and TripAdvisor, all these guys, TripAdvisor, I guess, is reviews. But all these, there's a ton of rich data around, around who's staying and what hotels and all the pricing related to it. But the hotels are still relatively blind as to how they're pricing, pricing their properties, right? and everyone wants to optimize what they're doing. So I think, I think there, there almost isn't a market that I can think of, you know, the federal government is using, is, is looking heavily right now at sort of big data solutions. You know, Palantir sort of I think led the way around security solutions, but I guarantee you there'll be a dozen more companies like that, not necessarily in the visualization space, but sort of the extracting signal from noise. Do you see the applications business as, as, as disrupting the existing applications business or largely incremental to what's out there? Yeah, I, I, think, I think a little bit of both. I think, uh, I think there are going to be some cases that are going to be incremental, and I think there's some cases where I think you can be massively disrupted. So I think you can, in the same way, look, the enterprise to me always works in these sort of stack replications. So you, know, you had a whole suite of enterprise software, and now all of that has been replicated with SaaS. And the guys who won in the old model don't win in the new model, right? You know, look at someone like Workday. It was the, it's the same core team, obviously, that sold to Oracle, but, yeah, but you, know, you have PeopleSoft. You, you have a new solution to do that, to do that on, on a SaaS. Uh, model. And, and then the other thing is you get companies like we're invested in Marketo. You know, Marketo is something that wasn't really possible before you had a SaaS delivery model. I think you're going to see the same types of things in the big data space. I think you're going to see there are going to be companies out there that just do a better job of the existing applications because they pull in more data and they're able to give you a lot more analytics. But I think there are also going to be new companies that we haven't thought of yet. They're going to be able to do things that were, weren't possible before. What's the... Um areas that you're seeing that are venture backable? Because with big data, there's opportunities to create a lot of slew of different kinds yeah. of life, I don't want to say lifestyle businesses, but nice little small businesses. We had um, you know, Scott Detson on from uh, Pure Storage earlier talking about some of his history at WebLogic, and we had Mike Olson on, and we're seeing the 40-something entrepreneur come back, yeah. the systems guys, right? Like me, my age. Um, but also, um, Scott talked about this data ISV concept as one area he liked, and so you're going to see all these little niche opportunities that. Yeah that look like a feature, might be a little lifestyle business, might be service oriented, because there's services in here, SaaS or whatever. Um, 
that might spawn up obviously self-funding, so there's a huge self-funding thing going on. How do you as a VC look at these opportunities and say, hey, I want to bank that one. Obviously, there's got to be a good market opportunity, but how do you separate and filter out ones you say, that's bankable, that's a fundable deal, that's venture fundable? I think there's, I think there's two, two directions. I think, I think there's the market-related questions, and there's, I guess there's a separate uh, topic that we haven't touched on yet, which I think is a, a big deal in this space, which is the talent pool. Um, I don't know if you notice, if you go around the, 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 the trade show floor here, Facebook has a booth solely for recruiting, right? And, and I've never been to an event where a company like Facebook has a booth just for recruiting HR purposes. I think it says a lot about what's going on here. Um, normally, if you come in and pitch me, one of the things I'm going to try to understand more around is your go-to-market model. You know, more, more companies fail because of go-to-market than because of bad technologies. Lots of smart engineers in the Valley come up with great technologies, but what's your path to market? I think there's a wrinkle in this space that's different than any other space I've worked in, which is the separation between the guys that get it and the guys that don't talent-wise, that gap is enormous, right? So you talk about- Can you give me an example of that? Yeah, I, I think John Gray is a great example of that, right? I mean, John, John is, when, when we announced the funding uh, with, our, with our investment partner, Andreessen, um, John, I got a number of emails about, about John and people saying, wow, you, know, you guys landed John Gray. He's the guy in HBase that, that everybody knows. That, that affords you two things. One, right, it gets you a lot of attention almost immediately. It also gives you the opportunity to recruit other really, really, really good guys who know John and want to work with him, right? And, and the gap between the, 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 the strong teams and the, the almost the strong teams, I think are going to start to diverge. I don't think there's going to be a, a middle class, if you will. I think they're going to be the haves and the have-nots. And so when I, when I see a team, one of the key things for me is, you know, who's the core technical team and is that core technical team is it strong enough to sort of attract other A players? Because there just aren't a lot of people in each of these verticals. There just aren't enough of people out there, right? This, this stuff is still relatively new. There aren't a lot of good teams out there. So you must love the Cloudera uh, dynamic then. Yes. With, with, <laughs> with that bench. Well, and, and, and absolutely. I mean, there, there are a couple guys at Cloudera that would, were they to leave, I think they'd be assaulted by 50 VCs <laughs> instantaneously. Because well, we recruited a key person out of Cloudera and that was uh, Poachable, but he's a grad student. Pink, Pink still talks to you? <laughs> well, he wasn't coming back. He ended up uh, oh, helping me out, helping our data project out, and then he took a, a full-time job with another company. I mean, yeah. very lucrative uh, position. So obviously, the talent are going to make some good money. And oh, by the way, Silicon Angle's hiring uh, uh, database scientists. So, so uh, if you're out there, uh, we're recruiting as well. We don't have a booth. But we have the cube. Yeah. But um, forget going to work for Facebook. Fuck, yeah, screw right. Facebook. You can work for John. Well, I would say that the, the, <laughs> the analogy I always like to use within my partnership. It's it's uh, someone should make a movie about this. Uh, Right after World War II, we did something called Operation Paperclip, right? It was, it was the U.S., what, what became the CIA, the OSS, uh, had a list of the top rocket scientists in Germany. And we wanted to make sure those guys didn't fall into Soviet hands. And guys like von Braun, who led the Apollo 11 rocket project, you know, all came out of this you know, land grab of going out and getting key scientists who just knew, who knew this material better than anybody else. There weren't that many people in the world in 1945 that knew rocket science. Right? And you had to go out and get the key rocket science. I think, I think we're seeing a rehash of that today in 2012. There aren't that many people who get this core big data. And if you've got a key HBase guy, if you've got a key Hadoop guy, if you, if, you, if, you, if you can grab someone who knows how to write applications on top of this infrastructure, they're, they're, they're orders of magnitude more valuable than, than other engineers in the same space. And you're seeing that, right? A Hadoop engineer today can get a you know, two fifty, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000 a year salary. Well, Mike Dauber, we gotta we gotta break. We gotta get sure. on schedule. Thanks for dropping in. Thanks, uh, guys. This guy is a young gun, rising star in the venture community. Obviously, big data is a massive surge. Completely new industry being constructed from the ground up. Um, you're gonna do well, I think. You keep Thank your you, nose sir. to the grindstone, as they say. You're gonna make a lot of money, uh, and great to see you spending a lot of time in there. So, Mike no. Dauber from Battery Thanks Ventures. For me. Thanks for Mike, coming on the you. Cube. Thanks. Okay.